to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And we're a married couple in love that loves ranking shit. DC EU is a little bit more darker, you know? It's a little bit more adult. So that's another reason that we can we can drop those those S-bombs, I think. Is that a thing? Oh god. I don't know. Quit while you're ahead, honey. <laughs> I was, I've never been ahead. This is our video for, uh, we're ranking our top 25 favorite characters in the DC Extended Universe. And so this is our video for numbers six through 15. Starting us off is number 15, and this is Etta Candy. Etta Candy was basically our comic relief yeah. from Wonder Woman. It's itchy, it's choking me. God, I blame it. Etta Candy is just, fantastic because she's got this great big heart. Mm -hmm. She has a real zest for life and real love of life at a very dark time in, in our history. And she yeah. manages to hold on to that and still bring us a little bit of, of hope and optimism and a bright spot in what is otherwise, you know, a evil god taking over the world via mass world war. Number 14 on our list is Aquaman. All right, so one of, one of the core characters in here uh, does not make our top 10 list. Aquaman, I think they did a great job reinventing this character. Growing up and, and watching the cartoons for Aquaman in the orange suit, and it was, she, she was kind of just always the, a joke. And if you've ever seen uh, The Boys on Amazon, they kind of play off of that about how much of a joke it is that he, he can talk to fish. And that's his, that's his thing. They made Aquaman a badass. <laughs> this big, tough, hulking, brutish dude that, uh, you know, drinks beers, kicks, kicks butt, and talks to fish. Where I thought he shined brilliantly was in the Justice League. I mm. mean, he put in just the right amount of humor in that film. He gave us some levity. He had some interesting dynamics with Batman and with yeah. Wonder Woman. I think the actor uh, does a great job, uh, Jason Momoa. He is someone that I have hope, bright hopes for Aquaman 2. I hope that, you know, they just get the script right and get the female lead right get the female lead right and i think that uh they got a great actor there so you know there's good things for aquaman in the future i think and next up this is going to be a shocker i think to anybody who watches any movie in the dceu it's batman they don't make the most of batman in the right way in the dceu which is a shame because batman is so mm -hmm. iconic i mean you think of dc you think of Superman, batman wonder woman i mean those are the three that instantly come to your mind ben affleck i think did a good bruce wayne Mm. Maybe not such a good Batman. Yeah, I think that one of the big problems with uh, Batman so far in the DCEU is he's not had a standalone movie. Um, they should have done a standalone movie before they did Batman versus Superman. I think that did that movie a, a big injustice to not have that beforehand. This version of Batman kind of didn't stack up to the to the other Batman versions that we have. So that's why that's another reason. Like we're we're going to judge this Batman harsher than we are some other characters maybe that have ranked ahead of Batman. Number twelve is Amanda Waller. She is a kind of a villain. Um, you know, she's a villain in, in Suicide Squad, and she is the representation of bad government. She is just a politician through and through, and she will use anyone to meet her ends and what she wants to have happen. And she doesn't care if they're a good guy, a bad guy, on the right side, on the wrong side. None of it makes a difference to her if they can just fit her agenda. And so I think... For that reason, she is such a great villain and somebody that you can so enjoy loving to hate. Mm. So next up is number 11, Freddie Freeman. Uh, he was actually my favorite in Shazam. <laughs> to me, Freddie was just the heart of the film. He was the moral compass. He was the Jiminy Cricket on Billy's shoulder. He was really my favorite in that movie. Number 10 in our, in breaking into our top 10 is Deadshot comes at us from Suicide Squad. And this is really Will Smith at his at his best. This kind of role for him is uh, is really good. You know, kind of uh, the bad guy, but he's got a little bit of, there's, there's a little bit of softness within that. So he's a villain, he's a bad guy, but we're rooting for him too because he's also a good father. And you know, that, that's, that's the person that we can cheer for. He doesn't serve his own agenda above his own humanity. And his daughter really brings out the humanity in him in a way that I think we can all find him very relatable. I mean, we're not all, brilliant assassins with an amazing aim but somehow he suddenly becomes really human to us in that moment next up we're going back to shazam for shazam <laughs> billy is a complicated kid and he's got uh some complicated relationships in his life which really take a toll on him uh he has some trust issues he's got a bit of a chip on his shoulder when we first meet him so i think shazam makes our top 10 one because uh we like Billy, and we like him as an adult as well. Uh, you know, he's actually Shazam. I think he does a great job as well. That's kind of like really what 
seals the movie for me as, as uh, one of my favorites in the DCEU. And also because I think his standalone movie is, uh, is different and, from some other DCEU movies, and we really enjoyed it. Number eight is Black Canary. Birds of Prey is uh, where Black Canary comes from. And she's a character that really kind of steals the movie. And, and, you know, we love Harley Quinn. Her, uh, that's, you know, she's kind of the star of that movie, even though it's called Birds of Prey, which is weird. That was the uh, whole, you know... <laughs> that was <laughs> whole, a thing. Whole other thing. You know, check, check out our review for, for Birds of Prey about that. Black Canary is... Uh, She's a badass. She's got some great moves, fighting moves. Yeah. Uh, she's got. She's a kind of one of the more fleshed out characters in that movie. Uh, she's got some conflictions. You know, she's she she works for the bad guy, but she still has a, a, a moral compass, and you know she. She, she doesn't know which which way to go, really. I mean, as a female audience member, there's just nothing not to love about Black Canary, <laughs> in my opinion. She sticks up for other women. She's a badass. She's got really sexy style. I mean, really like her yeah. wardrobe. Um, she's just, she's all around a freaking awesome woman. And Good singer, too. So number seven. Uh, and this is going to be another <laughs> shocker. I seem to be getting all these tough-to-explain ones because our audience is not going to like this. Superman. I fell in love with Henry Cavill in The Tudors. That was back on Showtime or something a million mm. years ago. Uh, I think he's a great actor, and he's got a way about him, a, a good nature about him, and a kind heart about him that makes him so well suited to be Superman. Zack Snyder said that he wanted to kind of get away from the the Boy Scout that was Superman that we we come to to know from Christopher Reeves' Superman and uh, the other Superman portrayal before Henry Cavill. Uh, I think I think that Superman. I don't think it's necessarily Henry Cavill's fault that Superman doesn't rise higher on our on our list. I think it's just again like like you were saying. It's just one of those things where Superman is is too perfect. Yeah, like you know, Kryptonite can can kill him, but other than that, he's really just someone that it's really hard to relate to. Number six on our list. So now that you know Superman's uh, seven, you're gonna be shocked that number six is Lois Lane. Uh, so we like Lois Lane so much in the DC Extended Universe. I think it's just because this reinvention of a character again is someone that is a badass. We've been using that a lot in our in this in these reviews. These characters, we like our characters that you know when they have a little bit of an edge to it. This Lois Lane is, you know, jumping in in the front line and wearing the, the Kevlar and not afraid to, to get her hands dirty and is not just the damsel in distress. This Lois Lane was such a breath of fresh air yes. that it was someone that we, we had to highlight and, we, you know, we really, we really liked. She's more interesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, is Superman still going to have to save her? Of course, he's Superman. She's human. There are going to be, you know, villains yeah. doing stuff. But the fact is, she on her own two feet as a reporter goes into war zones. I mean, right away we see the fact that this woman is a badass. And you don't have to wear a cape or spandex to be a badass. I mean, the people who rank highest on our list, like you said, it's the badasses in one way or another. Maybe they're a badass for justice and they're a lawyer. Maybe they're a badass politician and they're evil, but they're a badass in their own evil way. <laughs> like Amanda Waller. And I think one of the reasons that she is uh, ranks higher than you know a Superman or a Batman on our list is because we've, we we know this character. We know, we know Lois Lane very well uh, for having watched her in a, a couple different versions of her. Same as we know Superman, same as we know Batman. But whereas maybe Superman and Batman fell a bit short of our expectations, Lois Lane exceeded them. And so this when a, when a character that you know so well can all of a sudden reinvent themselves in a better way and make themselves better than you thought that they actually were when you originally liked them, that's why, that's why she ranks so high. Let us know what you thought about these characters. I'm sure there's, you're going to have a lot to say, so go ahead down in the comments and let us know what we got right, what we got wrong. Uh, you know, We'd love to hear from you, and we respond to all comments. And when you tell us what you think that we maybe got right or wrong and where you differ with us on an opinion, tell us why. Because we, I mean, yeah. like, we would love to know what your thoughts are. Specifically, if you think Batman should be number one, great. Tell us why. Because we would love to take that into consideration and think that through. Exactly. You've now heard our number 6 through 15 in the DC Extended Universe of our favorite characters. But they are definitely not definitive. <laughs>